All of us are products of our environment. What we eat, what we drink, the air we breathe. All of it shows up inside us. And doctors don't like what they're finding in adults and especially in kids. He's 18 months old. He's been on the plan for 18 months and he's loaded with a chemical I never even heard of. Discovering the chemicals inside you and me. I think we have about a gallon so far. Excellent. Yeah, I think when we come back. I don't like going to the doctor, so this is no fun. I'm not a big fan of needles. I'm here for what's called a body burden test. It's not the most pleasant of procedures. It'll take 120 cc's of blood, almost a pint, for scientists to look at traces of 250 industrial chemicals in my body. Let me just ask you, is, um, sure. have you ever had anyone pass out from giving so much blood? I haven't had anyone pass out. I've had no. people get nauseated a little bit. Uh -huh. well, let's get you some orange juice just so that you can uh, fuel up after uh, some sugar. That. Public health experts are only beginning to understand what harm, if any, low-level chemical exposure can cause. Dr. Leo Trasande worries most about children. Uh, we're currently in an epidemic of chronic disease among American children, rates of asthma, uh, childhood cancers, birth defects, uh, and developmental disabilities are all on the rise and increasingly are being attributed to chemicals that uh, we're all exposed to mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. You, you really you consider it an epidemic? I do consider it an epidemic. <laughs> Rowan and Michaela Holland are some of the first children to sound the alarm. In the beginning, I wasn't worried at all. I was fascinated. Oh. You made this Three years ago, when this video was taken, the entire Holland family decided to get body burden testing for a story in the Oakland Tribune. Their son Rowan was just 18 months old. At the time, he was the youngest child in America to ever be tested for chemical exposure. Michaela was just five years old. And I thought that would be really interesting to see, you know, if mom and dad are high in something, would the kids be high in it too? Their chemical exposure levels were high, but then they got the kids' results, and they were shocked. Rowan and Michaela's levels of chemical exposure were two, three, and four times that of their parents. For phthalates, also called plasticizers, found in plastic bottles, personal care products, and medical devices. For PCBs, they were used in electrical insulators in refrigerators and microwave ovens and banned in the late 1970s. But one number stood out, Rowan's level of PBDEs a class of flame retardants found in everything from foam cushions to rugs to mattresses to casings of electronics. They were nearly seven times the levels of his mom and dad. He has two to three, or at the time of testing, had two to three times the level of um, flame retardant in his body that's been found to cause thyroid dysfunction in lab rats. PBDEs are neurotoxins. They throw off normal brain function in lab animals. So could they be doing the same to children or adults? The answer is we don't know. The federal government had never even received any uh, studies looking at the effects of this chemical on human health because the federal government does not require chemical manufacturers to submit this type of data before bringing the chemical to market. You heard right. The Environmental Protection Agency, which is responsible for chemical regulation, doesn't require manufacturers to test for the effects of new chemicals on human health before getting approved. What's more, the approval process can take as little as 90 days. Compare that to the years it can take for pharmaceutical companies to get new drugs approved. The EPA declined to do an interview with us, but told us in an email, quote, if during the new chemical review process, EPA determines that it may have concerns regarding risk or exposure, the EPA has the authority to require additional testing. But of the 1,500 new chemicals submitted each year, their records show that only happens 10% of the time. Back at New York's Mount Sinai Medical Center, it's taken two months, but I'm finally about to learn the results of my body burden test from Dr. Leo Trasande. So, how are the results? Well, as you recall, a couple months back we drew quite a lot of blood and... I'm nervous here. Uh, well... Yeah, you're, you're not reassuring me. 
We tested you for 246 synthetic chemicals, and you tested positive for more than 100. Wow. Even a chemical way back to the 1970s, DDT, mm -hmm. which we detected in your body. So I have DDT in my body. You have DDT in your body. PCBs, another chemical that was banned in the 1970s. I got it. You've got it as well. Doctors think I probably got the DDT from a trip to Africa. Some countries there still use it to kill mosquitoes. As far as the PCBs, it has something to do with where I grew up, New York City. Growing up on the street, eating fish, uh, those fish probably came from the Hudson River. Right. It, the, back in the 1970s, there was a major uh, dump of PCBs into the Hudson River. The uh, PCBs were eaten up by fish. Which were then, of course, eaten by me. Next, my results for monobutyl phthalates, the stuff found in cosmetics, like the makeup I put on before going in front of the cameras. I tested above the 95th percentile. So what does that mean? The most al the alarming one is the potential for infertility. We asked Jack Gerard, the president of the American Chemistry Council, if phthalates could cause infertility. There's no risk to the human health. Just because we find chemicals in the body doesn't mean that it causes disease. But some scientists disagree, and they point to this. These flies may look like comets, but they're actually sperm. The sperm on the right was exposed to higher levels of phthalates. It has a longer comet-like tail, which indicates more general DNA damage. I suspect that the reason that you've got a very high level of phthalate is you probably put a lot of makeup on a lot of the time. So, so this is a potential lawsuit against CNN right here. I mean, you can't say for certain what the effects are of these chemicals in somebody's system. What little we know is just the tip of the iceberg. And unfortunately, I think that is enough to, to begin to act and proactively intercede and prevent chemical exposure. Are the chemicals running through my bloodstream, through your bloodstream, dangerous? The bottom line seems to be no one really knows. The question is, is that good enough?